and welcome back to another Cooking with H. And today we're going to be making a Reuben sandwich. Now this one has been in the wings for a long time because since we made the Philly cheesesteak, a lot of you said that we should make either a Reuben or a Cuban next. We went for the Cuban, now it's time for a Reuben. Cooking with H, cooking with H, let's go. Cooking with H, cooking with H, cooking with H, cooking with H, cooking with H. Reuben sandwich it says to use corned beef now what we have over here is corned beef I think is very different to what you have as corned beef I think what you have for this particular sandwich is more like a pastrami so I'm glad I looked into that because otherwise I would have put corned beef in this sandwich and it would have been a completely different product so I've got all my ingredients here to make my brine I'm not sure if you guys are going to be making a different kind of brine if you make this corned beef yourself or if you just buy it from the shop then maybe you don't know what goes into it but in here I have got a 100 grams of salt, 50 grams of brown sugar, 10 grams of thyme, which is actually in my saucepan, half a tablespoon of mustard seeds, half a tablespoon of red peppercorn, a quarter a teaspoon of allspice, one clove, and 15 grams of preserving salt. That preserving salt did actually scare me. Not something I've ever had before, but apparently that's what keeps it that nice pink colour that you get in the Reuben sandwich. Well, that's the idea anyway. So here we've got our thyme. I'm not sure if I was meant to like take it off the sprigs, but I'm just thinking because this is a brine and it's staying in it doesn't really matter and after a while obviously we will take the meat out of this so that's not going to actually form any part of our ingredients so we've got to put all of that in there and in with a liter of cold water and i've got to bring this to a boil so let me know down in the comments if you do make your own brines if you do brine your own meat or if you just do things like this regularly this is a new experience to me okay so we have some nice bubbling going on here so it is boiling i've got to reduce this now to a simmer for five minutes just to get all that salt to dissolve and there's not really much more for me to do so after this simmers i just got to let it cool down and then i've got to get the beef involved so join us once this has cooled down. The brine is now completely cooled down, so I need to get the beef ready. It says to remove any fat or sinew on the beef, and then I need to give it a little poke, I think, a few times with a knife so that it absorbs some of that brine, and then cover it with the brine in a sealable container and pop it in the fridge. It's ideal to do this two to seven days before I make the sandwich, so I'm gonna pop it in the fridge today, and then every day I need to turn it over just to see how it goes. I'll be using my lovely Pampered Chef mats that Katrina sent me for this one. Now, unfortunately, this is a rolled brisket and not a complete flat brisket. So I'm going to leave it rolled for the purpose of brining it because it won't fit in any of my pots. So now it just says to pierce with a knife all over on both sides. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what your favourite sandwich is. In to my non-metallic container here with the brine oh, mrs h really cuts it fine doesn't she with, with things fitting so here is another example of using a container that is only slightly the right size i mean with trial and error i'm gonna Try and scoop in all these peppercorns and mustard seeds as well because we want all that nice flavour. There we go, our brisket is in the brine. I'm going to wash my hands and get that ready to go into the fridge. For those of you that were on one of our recent lives, this is a nice bit of Tupperware that was kindly given to me by my mum and dad. Didn't know if I'd ever be brining some beef, ready to make a Reuben sandwich and some Tupperware when I inherited this. Okay, join us in a few days time when we actually make that Reuben sandwich. It's been in the fridge for six days now, so I've taken it out. I have soaked it in water, I've rinsed it, and now that lovely bit of beef 
Ooh. It's in my pan. I need to add some water to it and some onion and some bay leaves and some peppercorns and I need to then cook that. So I'm just going to cover this with water now, cold water. I'm going to pop in my quartered onion, my bay leaves and my peppercorns. And I need to put that on and bring it to the boil before reducing it to a low heat. Whilst the brisket's doing its thing and cooking away nicely, I am going to get on and make that Russian dressing. Let me know in the comments down below, do you make Russian dressing or do you prefer Thousand Island dressing? I don't actually know what the difference is. I like Thousand Island dressing, but I'm going to go for the Russian dressing today. But I am going to go a little bit rogue because I was looking at the recipe and it's going to make a hell of a lot of dressing and it's just Mr. H and I that's going to be eating this. So I'm not going to do the full amounts that the recipe says. I'm just going to put it in by eye. The quantity is according to what it says, but minimise it so that we don't add loads and loads of Russian dressing. So if I'm following the recipe, it says one cup of mayo, quarter of a cup of tomato ketchup, tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, but we do call it Worcester sauce over here. Half a teaspoon of horseradish. Tablespoon of red minced onion. A teaspoon of lemon juice. Half a teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to be using the Louisiana hot sauce that we were sent. A teaspoon. Bound to get too much of this, aren't I? Mm. But I'm guessing with these ingredients, it is going to be a little bit tangy. Maybe a little spicy. Might just put a little bit more mayo in. Voila. Got to wait for the beef to boil. Once the beef has started boiling, I've got to reduce it down to a simmer. The brisket is finally ready. It has been resting. Now, I know this is normally thinly sliced, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to thinly slice it myself. This is a rolled brisket because that's what we get here. So it isn't as thick as your lovely bits of brisket that we've seen. But let's cut it and see what this is going to end up like. Tell you what, I'll get a sharper knife. I'm trying to thinly slice it. I think if this goes well, I would be tempted to do something like this again, but I would actually buy a proper big bit of brisket like you have for smoking. And I did see recipes actually that you can do your pastrami corned beef in a smoker as well, but I've decided not to do that because I think I need to work my way up to brisket. It has got that lovely, pink colour as well thanks to the preserving salt which I wasn't sure if I was going to get so I'm quite happy. Don't know if you know this but a lot of the additives that you have over there in the States we don't have here so in the preserving salt that I bought it wasn't actually pink it was white because the colouring is not allowed to be in there over here in the UK. I am just going to show you the brisket because I am pretty impressed with how that's come out for a thin as in not a very thick piece of meat. I think I've done an all right job but I know it's going to be proof in the pudding so we better get preparing these Rubens. Okay, I've got my rye bread. I did go for one that's got seeds on it as well, so hopefully this will be okay. Butter side down, I think. Got some butter here. I think I'm gonna layer it in the pan, butter side down. Get some beef. Got some Swiss cheese. Didn't make my own sauerkraut, I've just bought some. Then the Russian dressing. Right, let's flip it over. Oh, nicely toasted. Got to get that cheese to melt a bit more though. Okay, we're Reuben ready. Ooh, Reuben ready. Okay. I have to say it smells amazing. It does smell good, doesn't it? Looking good, Mrs. H, looking good. Brilliant, so I just want to get stuck right in. <laughs> right. Ready? Reuben sandwich, yeah? Take one. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Bloody hell. Mm. What is going on there? That's lovely. Actually, people laugh that we say that's lovely. That is really something else. That's good. What is going on? That's brilliant. What? I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, or do, because you don't really like sauerkraut. I'm not sure if I was going to be is sold on the... sauerkraut in this, is it? Yeah, sauerkraut. Obviously. You've got the meat, it's really tender as well. Mm. That... Mm. I prefer that to a Cuban sandwich. Oh! Seriously? No, I think Cuban was good as well, but this is really good. I'm glad there's more beef left, because mm. we're definitely going to be making more. We were just making the one to try before Alana goes to bed. But oh my God. Really good. Rating? It's got to be a nine and a half out of ten. It might even be a ten out of ten. It's one of the best sandwiches or toasted sandwiches mm. I've ever had. It just like... My mouth is watering, even though I'm eating it. It's so watering. I do just want to try a little bit of this on its own, because I just want to try and get the flavour on, on its own and just Not see... Not much cement ring on this, I love. Mmm. Mmm. Nice. It's nice, but... Oh, you're getting some extra flavours mm. now. Whatever's going on in that... Yeah. Bloody I'm, works. I'm going a good 9 out of 10 for this. Mm. Check out the merch store. We're going to Texas. October 2023. Link in the descriptions. If this video has left you hungry for more, it's left me hungry for more, then subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and the like button, you bloody legends. And all that needs us to say is... Take care. God bless. And keep on rubbing <laughs>